battles over unused toothbrushes, unmunched lunches, lights not shut, surfaces not swept, or the existential morass surrounding the kids' sagging pants. Even your promised touch of springtime can't protect us from the terrible job Leo did on the roof that caused the flood next to the garbage cans, which culminated in the tragic call to the roofer who really and truly fell. I wonder if I ever told you that there was a time when ripping through the chord changes of this old song afforded a guy a place of honor among young jazzers. How back then Sam Furness was my go-to pilot, sitting next to me at the Henry Street's big band. Alto strapped to his side, all the things he was, achingly elegant, quiet, focused, a study in fire. Who could imagine that one day we'd attach those headphones to his fragile, blue-gray head, five short months after the bad news, Mobley Griffin and Coltrane singing him into the breathless hush of the evening from the golden bells. Truth is, things change. And the song was never a favorite. Just another river to flop around in another impossible lawn made greener by someone else's eighth notes. Today when we were cooking oatmeal, I heard Sonny Chris drive his Selmer through the angel glow that lights a star line. And I marveled at the metaphorical power of stars, how they rise above the bridges of all these old tunes, even glistening above our most tragic roofs. Big Sam ended up on, and whether or not he stuck with the Lamberson mouthpiece, or switched back to the Selmer Sea Star, opting for a slightly thinner line. Yeah.